There's nothing you can tell me about Memphis that I don't already know. There's nothing you can tell me about Memphis. About Memphis. From the boardroom to the streets. Now I don't already know. With Mike from Memphis, man. Together, we can fix things. Uh, really. When you say, I want to be treated fairly, and I want, uh, and I want, I want a voice. A voice. Yeah. I want. He a saw voice. things weren't fair. So he, he saw things weren't fair. So he chose to run for mayor. You get up and do something when you really care. It's Memphis 360. I'm with you. I'm with you. In the meantime, it's Memphis 360. In the meantime, in between time, we got folks shooting people up out the frame. And if I said a word, we've become accustomed to people dying in this city. Yeah, it's Memphis 360. Turning the TV on and the news and see our loved ones and see young people that are out of control. And now you see, okay, okay, okay. But we talk about incarceration, we talk about the youth, we talk about giving them the ability, we talk about investing in young people and investing in the community. See, I hate ignorance. I hate when people make decisions about things and they make statements and they haven't done their research and they haven't done their research how can you fix the problem when you don't even know what the problem is we need some help in this city we need some help in this city it's Memphis 360 see I hate you I hate you it's Memphis 360 it's Memphis 360 man it's Memphis 360 And good evening. Welcome to the television show Memphis 360, where we said we like to go from the boardroom to the streets. And as always, we say you got to be able to know what's going on in the streets if you're going to fix the issues of the citizens of the city of Memphis and the citizens of Shelby County. We got so many people that are in uh, influential places, but they've lost touch with reality and they really don't know what's going on out here with the people. They don't know what the people want. They don't know what the people needs are. And it's almost like they have just turned to uh, whatever it is that they in fact want to do and whatever their special projects are as opposed to the needs of the citizens of this city. And we try to bring you individuals in the community that are doing good things in the community, individuals that are running for elected offices. And as you know, we've had candidates on this show in the last couple of weeks. We've had Tawana Murphy, we've had uh, David Clemens, we've had uh, a couple of other individuals. And tonight we have a good show for you as well. We have Mr. James Kirkwood, who is a former police officer, uh, used to be a colonel on the police department, and he is running for City Council District 3. And we also have Mr. Anthony Hardaway in the studio who is representing Mr. Greg McNeil with some great prints, man. You know, we got young people that are out here doing great and wonderful things all across the country. Mr. McNeil is from the state of Tennessee. However, he is currently living in California. Uh, but Mr. Hardaway is actually showing some of his prints tonight. Great and wonderful things. You know, we talk about all of the bad things that are happening in this city, but we got some good people, uh, young African Americans that are doing good things all across this country. Now, I wanted to talk real quick about the DA, Steve Mulroy, today released a video of Mr. Javion Hutzputz. Hutzputz? Uh, the video that he was, had an encounter, he was killed with uh, from a sheriff's deputy. Uh, and you can go onto the DA's website and actually view those videos. And you can go to channel 13, channel 3, channel, everybody's carrying those videos right now. Uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting because it's been a lot of controversy. You know, you got individuals that are always talking about the police, you know, doing this, doing that. And you make up your own mind, but now you have the ability to actually see the video. And I did take a look at it uh, myself because I want to see what's going on as a citizen of this great city. And uh, I don't know. 
You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I saw the police officer pull the car over. I saw uh, the police officer walk up to the car. I saw the young man kind of wrestle with the police. He getting back into the car. He's revving the car up. The police officer some kind of way get uh, jumps in the car. I don't know about all that, but that ain't me. But he jumped in the car and he's hanging out of the car. I didn't see the officer get dra dragged, but this guy was doing, I don't know, God knows what. He had a beautiful little Mustang, and I show hate that something happens to our young people like this. It's about decisions that you make. Don't put yourself in a lot of these situations. You know, uh, when I was the president of the Police Association, I used to always try to give tips, you know, when you have traffic stops. Be compliant. And a lot of, you're going to hear a lot of other individuals say, well, I need to be compliant. <laughs> he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. If you have complaints, Lodge those with the precinct, lodge those with internal affairs, what have you. But there's no sense in being controversial out there in the streets with police officers. They're just as afraid of you as you are of them. And I'm going to tell you, especially today, because you don't know what individuals have in cars. But when you take off with a police officer hanging out your car, there's not going to be a happy ending for nobody. Not for the police officer because he was hospitalized. Uh, for a very long time, and he may still be hospitalized. I'm not sure. I think he had to have a couple of surgeries because eventually he was thrown from the car. And then the young man who was shot. So now we have a family that's grieving in this community uh, that has lost a son. And nobody wants to lose a child. No parent wants to bury a child. But I'm going to tell you, it's a lot of crazy things that are going on. A lot of bad decisions are being made on all parts. Bad decisions being made by uh, young people in this community and I'm gonna tell you I've seen some bad decisions being made by police officers in this city but we all got to try to get it together so that you know we can live in a safe community and have a happy prosperous life okay that's what it's all about um, wait a minute it was another subject that I wanted to talk to you about but you know I've been running on and on and on so I kind of forgot about it what what was that other topic uh, Angel, you know? Oh, yes. All you had to do was say $1,800. Uh, that was a breaking news, breaking news, breaking news that happened right before I got here. Uh, it was interesting because, and I was sitting in my car, and I heard a commercial come on about Fat Tuesdays downtown. They've opened a Fat Tuesdays downtown. It's like four floors. It's got all of this good and wonderful stuff. And then I saw that there was a birthday party that was had for city councilman Martavius Jones. Now, this, this is only speculations because I don't know. I don't have the facts, but this is what came across the news. Um, uh, one of the news reporters for the Daily News reported it, that they spent $1,800 of your money, taxpayer money, to have a birthday party at Fat Tuesday for City Councilman Martavius Jones and City Councilman J.B. Smiley was the one who signed off on it. Now, that's a misuse of government funds, if in fact that is the case. Um, I have no problem with you having something in your office, you want to door luncheon, you're uh, entertaining individuals in the community, a group in the community, you know, you can actually utilize some of your uh, funds for that. But to have a personal birthday party, I'm going to say that's a no. If and if, in fact, that is what happened. I'm not saying it happened. I'm saying that's what's being reported that happened. Now, we got a lot of elections going on in the community. And not only do we have elections going on out here in the city of Memphis, but we also have parallel elections that are about to start in the Memphis Police Association. It, he's starting to heat up in the Memphis Police Association and people are jockeying for position. And it's going to be interesting. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it right now, but I'm going to be coming back to you because I'm going to track the elections in the Memphis Police Association as well. Because I'm going to tell you, those elections are crucial. It's crucial who's going to lead 2,000 police officers in this city. It's crucial in that they have in mind a spirit of service to the community. 
it's important that they are a part of the community. I know when I was down there, I tried to make sure that I stayed out in the community. Uh, we helped the community. We let the community know that we had a vital interest in the community. We were a part of the community. I am a native Memphian, grew up here, educated here, and many police officers are. We have family members here, and we love the city of Memphis. And that has to be represented through the representation that's put out in the city. We were able to get the benefits back for all of the retirees. They said, Michael, you'll never be able to get the uh, retirement back. Wrong. All police officers can now be in the retirement fund, the 1978 plan. Uh, they had created a hybrid. Michael, you'll never be able to get the retirees back in insurance. Wrong. <laughs> Officers that retire now have the ability to get back into the city's insurance plan if, in fact, that's what they choose to do. A lot of officers are going off getting other jobs and picking up their insurance uh, through other employers. But they said it couldn't be done. I'm going to tell you how it was done. It was done with the help of the citizens of the city of Memphis. We could not have done it without you. But I am hoping that it is because we had built a relationship with the individuals in the community and they felt as though, you know, we were deserving of having the ability to have insurance because of all of the things that we went through while we were on the police department because a lot of times, just as this officer that was thrown from that car, individuals put themselves in harm's way, all right? And that's not something we need to have to worry about as we uh, go through our careers. Uh, well, I don't want to get hurt because I ain't going to be taken care of, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be telling you about the elections for the Memphis Police Association. Uh, the current president, Eska Little John, done an excellent job, and she just got promoted to major, and she's going to be moving on. As a matter of fact, she already has. She's a major on the Alpha Shift out in Airway Station and acting as the president of the police association in the daytime. That's the dedication that she has, all right? So... Hey, I want to go ahead on and we're going to take a real quick commercial break and I'm going to get my first guest up here, Mr. James Kirkwood, coming out of North Memphis, coming out of Westwood and all of that good stuff. You know, he left us over in Scudderfield. Yeah, he's from Scudderfield too. He left us over there and went out to Whitehaven somewhere, somewhere out there. You know, I ain't, tra I ain't tracking all of that. But we're going to have him to come up because he's been a servant in the community. He's a, a, a serving pastor of a church, and he's doing a whole lot of good things in the community. And he wants to tell you why you should vote for him to be your next representative in District 3. So we're going to take a real quick commercial break. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Hey folks, it's Issa Haddad here. I got some good news and a special invitation for you to come see me here at Sunrise Carrierville. Come on down, check out my inventory with new, pre-owned, and certified vehicles to choose from. I can get you financed when no one else can. Come on by, bring your family. I treat you like family. Come see me, Issa, here at the number one dealership in the Mid-South, 4605 Houston Levy Road, Sunrise, Carrierville. Come on down, check out my inventory with hundreds of vehicles to choose from, pre-owned, new, and certified. Good news from Sunrise Chevrolet. Get in your new vehicle today. Come on in, ask for Issa. Bankrupt, slow pay, bad credit, it's okay. Let Issa put you in your brand new truck or car today when you shop at Sunrise Chevrolet, Carrierville. And don't forget, ask for me, Issa. Can you actually imagine hosting your next event at the all-new SVP Banquet and Event Center? Yes, spacious, beautiful venue with plenty of parking, located in the heart of East Memphis. Let us host your next intimate birthday gathering, family repast, bachelorette party, wedding and reception, baby shower, corporate meeting, social club event. Call us today. Don't wait. 901-244-6874. The all-new SVP Banquet and Event Center. <laughs> Tune in to Talking Law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill and the special guest host, Attorney Jerome Payne. Live TV Talk on your digital device. 
on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Download the SVP TV app right now. Check us out every Tuesday on Comcast Cable, Channel 17, 8.30 p.m. And we are live every Friday on Facebook Live, 6 o'clock in the evening. You've got a question, our attorneys have the answer. So let's talk law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill on the SVP TV Network. For over 20 years, Opox has been keeping the Mid-South warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Opox is family owned and operated, so our family will take care of yours every step of the way. And right now you can double up and save. Buy a new AC unit and get 50% off a new furnace to match it. Count on Opox for fast and professional heating and cooling services. Count on Opox. And good evening. We'd like to welcome you back to Memphis 360, the television show that we say we like to go from the boardroom to the streets. And I'd like to welcome Mr. James Kirkwood. What's going on? Hey, appreciate you, Mike. What's going on, James? It's going well. <laughs> <laughs> I can call him James now, y'all. I used to have to call him Colonel Kirkwood, uh, being on the police department. So tell the people a little bit about you. Well, most people know I'm a native Memphian. Uh, most people call me Colonel Kirkwood Steele. Mm -hmm. uh, I am. Uh, Grew up in Scudderfield, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. along with Mike, you mm -hmm. all. I'm a little mm -hmm. before him, mm -hmm. but uh, grew up in Scudderfield, and we was blessed to move to Mitchell Sub. Uh, out in Walker Homes, and okay. God blessed me to graduate from Mitchell High School. Okay. Uh, well, most people think I graduated from Manassas. Uh, you uh, should I have. I still get away with that. Yeah. But uh, been a you know I, I'm a guy who loved Memphis. I'm a servant, uh, and God have always blessed me to work in careers or, or in positions to be able to serve the community of Memphis that I love. Okay. Uh, over 32 years on the police department. Wow. And it was absolutely awesome uh, working now as the executive director, moving young men, trying to reduce poverty, okay. moving young men and women into the vocational skill trade uh, programs that helps increase our middle class. Uh, that's our effort to reduce poverty. Uh, just working in partnerships, building relationships so that we can better serve the community okay. for those people who need it. I know uh, you were the colonel down at Rain Station for how long? Three years. Three years. And I know you built a lot of relationships yes. out there. They, I'm going to tell you, they loved the Colonel Kirkwood out there because he was a people person and he was one of those individuals that actually, as a precinct commander, got involved in the community. So even as a president of the Police Association, I heard nothing but rave reviews about, you know, you uh, and, and individuals, every time I read into them, they were giving you accolades in regards to your service out there and your commitment and your love for the people. So um, tell me, what made you want to decide to run for city council? Jesus. Well, uh, here in, in all actuality, while I was worth serving as colonel, okay. all right, while I was serving as colonel, people would always say, Kirkwood, you need to run for political office. When you when you retire, mm -hmm. you need to come back mm -hmm. and Whitehead would come back mm -hmm. and run for city council to serve us. All okay. right. The pastors, the community members, the neighborhood watch, wow. uh, captains, everybody would say, Hey, you need to come back and run. Uh, when I went out to Old Allen, you mm -hmm. know, they moved me. I was upset, but it was a good thing. <laughs> uh, but the same thing happened. You know, Kirkwood, when you retire, you need to run for city council. Okay. Now, little did they know that they was really confirming something that had been spoken in my life when uh -oh. I was uh, in the 10th grade. Uh -oh. uh, my teacher, Barbara Tyler, told me after a heated debate uh -oh. uh, about serving community, she looked at me and she said, you need to run for public office. You have a heart for the people. Mm. Uh, and I've always had a heart for, for the people. I've always cared about the people. And uh, I get a phone call from some of the pastors. Uh, this is Patrice's uh, last run, mm -hmm. uh, what you gonna do? Mm -hmm. And then I get a call from Patrice and she said, listen, I want to support you. I want to, you know, endorse you as the next candidate. Wow. Will you run? Wow. And so I'm like, they don't know they're confirming what's always been in my heart okay. to do is run. And so with that, the uh, pastors and community members, my family, mm. uh, Patrice Robinson coming up, endorsing me. I'm like, okay, I'm in. I'm going to run. So you're endorsed by Patrice? Yes. Okay, who is the current sitting city, city council, council woman yes. for District 3. Okay, so... 
Let's get straight to it. Crime is a problem in this city. Crime is a major problem, major. and that's on everybody's mind. Yes. You know, uh, and I, as a citizen, um, I've served my country 20 some years in the Army, served the police department 20 some years on the police department, and now I just want to enjoy my twilight. You know what I mean? Yeah. In peace, harmony, and be able to go where I want to go and do what I want to do in the city of Memphis. And there are a lot of citizens that feel yeah, like the that. Way. They just want to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, the little bit of life that they have left. So how do you, as the city councilman for District 3, plan to address this issue? Uh, you know, as colonel of the police department, you know, five years in a row, I worked at Hickory Hill. I worked three years at, uh, as a colonel okay. at uh, Rain Station and mm -hmm. one year at uh, Old Island Old Station. Island. In all those communities, we reduced crime. I was able to reduce the crime, the violent crime, the juvenile crime, mm -hmm. the property crime. And how I did it was that I galvanized a, a relationship with the community. Okay. I'm a big proponent of community policing. Anybody know Kirkwood? No. Mm -hmm. He believes that the way you solve problems and issues is you bring community stakeholders together okay. and you work out a solution, you work out a plan that all of us can put into uh, mm -hmm. effect so that we can make a difference. Okay. Uh, in doing that, that's what I did. So as a city council person, okay. uh, I get to approve or uh, to weigh in on the next police director okay. that the mayor will present, all right? I'm going to be a strong advocate for a police director who is going to work hard and has a history wow. uh, behind them of doing community policing. Okay. And I'm not talking about uh, community policing in spots. Okay. I'm talking about real active community policing where you engage with community, you create a safety strategy with community to be able to be put in effect mm -hmm. so that all of us can walk away from the table mm -hmm. and we have our action item that we will do. The pastor has his action item, mm -hmm. the business, the teachers, the principals, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, politicians, myself, and I'm going to advocate strong for community policing. I'm going to work hard to find funding because city council member, as right. a city councilman, now I get to see the budget. Okay. All right, and I yeah. get to see and find yeah. dollars that we can put into the community programs and to community initiatives to be able to uh, 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 address uh, the crime, all right? Okay. Uh, we sit back and we talk about our juveniles, our young men and women. Mm -hmm. I hate to call them juveniles, but our young, our children. Yeah. We talk about our children going astray. Yes. You know, and the, here's the fact that we, I've, I've worked, Mike, even now, I worked all summer with three uh, programs uh, engaging young boys, okay. uh, young boys, mm. uh, moving them in the right direction, building their character, mm -hmm. uh, giving them hope for a future. Okay. Uh, and so those programs, every program I worked with need funding. If we could find the funding wow. all right, to wow. stand them up, wow. and as a council person, you give me the ability, as when you vote for me, you give me the ability mm -hmm. to go and find those funds and bring them back to the community to okay. do the work. Okay. And so I'm not uh, going to sit up here and say that Kirkwood is going to do this by himself. Kirkwood has to do this with everybody. This has to be a we, uh, a, a unified effort from everybody involved in District 3. Not only just District 3, but citywide, because this problem is citywide. Okay, uh, this is Greg McNeil. That's the name that popped up on the phone. Go ahead, sir. You're on Memphis 360. Hey, Michael. This is Greg McNeil, the photographer. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How about you? Uh, I can't complain. Uh, I just figured I'd call in and um, say hi and also say thank you for um, showing my work. I really appreciate that. Oh, you're so welcome. You are so welcome. Not a problem. Can you do me a favor? Can you call back in about 15 minutes? I have, Mr. Mr. I have Mr. Kirkwood on the set with me now, but I do That's would right. love Go to talk ahead. to Go you. Ahead. Okay? 15. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Okay, the number to call is 244-6874, 244-6874. We have Mr. James Kirkwood, who is running for City Council District 3, and he is telling us how he feels about and how he plans to address this crime issue, something that's very key and something that's very prevalent on everybody's mind in this community because we want to go out and we want to yes. have fun and we want to just hang out in the park or go, you know, something as simple as going to Kroger, 
Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, it's so it's so much going on. People being attacked, people being this, people being that. Uh, I think the other day I saw a 78 year old woman who was accosted at some church. Yes. At a church. Churches used to be off limits, sir, but uh, evidently that's not the case anymore. And I just think that that's so sad. And I like one of the things that you said is those are our kids, our grandkids, yes. nieces, nephews, uh, great grandkids, what have you, but they belong to us. And I'm not going to disown them either. So what is one of the first things, how do you plan on bringing, because one of the things that I see, there has not been a lot of investment either in the districts themselves. Yes. So how do you plan on addressing that? Uh, again, uh, we are blessed to be, as a councilman, you are blessed to be able to uh, weigh in on division Wait a minute. heads. You, you keep saying this. Why, why we haven't done this? Well, I can't tell you why. Okay, okay. I, you know, I, I, but I'm that, just, that was a loaded question. Yeah, that was a loaded question. <laughs> uh, but hey, guys, listen. Uh, as a councilman, you know, you get to oversee the budget also, all yeah. right? There's a budget that comes before the council that the mayor presents. You get to uh, 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 pay attention to that budget and approve that budget, and you get to sit back and say, hold on, wait a minute, guys. Uh, there's nothing in here uh, to deal with redevelopment. You know, there's nothing to do with workforce development in this budget mm -hmm. for District 3. Mm -hmm. I need those things put in this budget before mm. I can vote for it, mm. all right? And uh, along with myself, we have four councilmen that serve as, uh, will it be four votes, four council people that's for on District the, for three. District 3. Mm -hmm. We have to get together and say, hey, man, we got to make sure that we are included in this budget. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes, and I'm honest, sometimes I say, look like I'm paying taxes, but I'm not getting my dollars exactly. worth. All right. And so I want to make sure that we are having, we have funding to make sure that our sanitation department is up and running yes. 100%. Yes. That's equipment that uh, those workers are getting a good pay, you know, for the work that they do so that they can come out. Come I want to make sure that street maintenance is working to make sure that we clear up these potholes and let's be real we have to be a relationship so as a council person i have to work mm. with our state representatives mm -hmm. who bring money down uh, to our city mm -hmm. with our uh, uh federal congressmen and senators yes republican or yes. democrat yes. it don't matter yes we got to work with them so that they could bring money down to our community so that we can be so that we can serve and so that's what i'm going to be doing as council person exactly uh, working i love building relationships Relationships, I build relationships even now mm -hmm. for the things that I've been able to get done is through relationships mm -hmm. and partnerships mm -hmm. with organizations to get these things done. Mm. You know, and, and he just said a mouthful because we're spending a lot of money. A lot I mean, of money. a lot of money. They're talking about, you know, I was passing uh, the fairgrounds the other day. They're breaking, breaking ground over there again, building something else. I don't even know what it is as a taxpayer, but I don't know what it is. I know they have proposed uh, tearing down the Coliseum, putting in a soccer stadium, putting in this, putting in that. Uh, I think Mayor Strickland had proposed like $780 million in refurbishing the Liberty Bowl Stadium and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm for economic development when it comes yes. to that because we want to draw tourists in. But we just spend 200 and some million dollars or what have you on that white building that's over there, which is a sports complex. Then you give Carlisle $95 million to spend downtown to build a hotel. Then we've invested all of this money downtown to refurbish downtown. And I'm telling you, I'm not against redeveloping the core of the city and those things that are going to bring individuals here. But I have to ask the question, if we're spending all of this money, yet we have no activities for children, for young people. We don't have a water park. I, got to, I had to take my daughter to Six Flags in St. Louis, St. and we were Louis. sitting there trying to say, are we going to Six Flags, or are we going to Magic Springs, Magic Springs, or are we going to Nashville Shores? Now, as a city this size, we're the second largest city in the state of Tennessee. Why well, I got to be trying to figure out whether I'm going over to Arkansas, or I'm going to Missouri, or I'm going up to, to you know, we used to have Splash here. We used to have Liberty, uh, what was it, Liberty Land. Liberty Land. You know, I got to go to Six Flags. Most cities our size have things such as that. For our kids. For our kids. Yes. Our kids really don't have anything. We got a uh, children's museum. 
Yeah, but we have to come together as a community. That's why I tell people, this is a time, guys, it's a crucial time for us to come together. In this election, it's a changing of the guard, mm -hmm. all right? You get a new mayor. Come on. You get a lot of different kinds of people. And you have to get people who have a vision, okay. all right, okay. for a children amusement uh, center or okay. area. Okay. We have to create that. And I think if we do that, if we come together with our CDCs, our community development associations, and we begin to work, to make those things happen, we can create those spaces, mm -hmm. and then we can work with investors to go after the funding to take care of that. And we can look for funding through the federal, yes. through the state, uh -huh. and through the local, the city. Uh -huh. We can look for funding in there. That's, all right, that's another you know, bone I have. To it's, it's a bone, but hey, <laughs> you know, we got to work with what we got, what we Man. what we have. But we have a, a, a good state representatives that's on the ground okay. up there that can help uh, 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 negotiate and bring down funding who, so that who, we can put these in place. My state representative is Karen Camper, okay. all right, who's yes. running for mayor, yes. uh, uh, who I've been working with, uh, Touche Parkinson on the Old yes. Island side, yes. uh, who I work with. Uh, these guys can do work, all right? Okay. They can, but we got to have a collaborative effort. Okay. Here's the thing I've always said. If we can't, we got to come out of our silos, mm -hmm. all right, and we got to come together to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an economic boom in this area, all right, through wow. the Blue Oval Project. Yes. And we have to work hard to make sure that Memphis gets its share and that we put that into effect Come where on. Memphis become the premier city, yes. all right, yes. in this west uh, west corner. Right. We don't want uh, Jackson to all of a sudden step up and outshine and now Memphis. Ja now Jackson bigger than Memphis. Yeah, you know, you yes. don't want that. But in order to do it, we have to get our crime down. We have to make sure yes. that our schools are strong. Yes. We have to make sure that this blighted spaces that we have, that we work with our CDCs. As a councilman, I'm going to work with my CDC, my community development people, so that we can build okay. affordable housing and we can build nice apartment complexes, mm. Mm. complexes that can move my millennials and Gen Zs back to Whitehaven mm. and Hickory Hill. Mm. All right? I'm like, hey, Kay, listen. They want these, this style of apartment. They want this style of condominium. Let's create that so that they can come back and work for us. And let's make sure we had the 3.0 plan. Yeah. We had the Memphis Moore. I was working. I worked on both of those plans. What happened to them? Hey, it's time to get them off the paper. Mm. All right? They happened? were good plans. They, invite, they engaged citizens to come up with it. It's time to get those plans off the paper and put them up in brick and mortar mm. and stand them up. Oh. Oh, that was a uh, hey guys, yeah, both for Kirk. Okay, so yeah. if they if they want to get it, because we gotta we gotta uh, we we gotta kind of close this up. But if they want to get involved in your campaign or contribute to your campaign, how do they do that? You go to electjameskirkwood.com. Go to my website. Uh, and just volunteer. We, we want you. We want to be canvassing. We want to get the message out. We want phone bank. And for donations, you can find contribute button and just click on it and you can give uh, several different ways. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, you got one minute. Tell these people why they should vote for James Kirkwood. Luella's son. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dorothy Nelson's <laughs> son. Yeah. Hey guys, listen. Uh, for years I've worked to serve you in the community. Hickory Hill, Oak Haven, and uh, Whitehaven. I live in Whitehaven. Okay. I love this area so that I move to that area. I'm working even now to serve you in the capacity as the executive director for the Memphis Christian Pastors Network. Okay. I work in partnership with our churches uh, today, moving young men into the workforce uh, out at Blue Oval where they are earning above, they, they're earning middle class wages mm. today. Mm. I want to strengthen our middle class. I want to make sure that the, that the 40,000 voters that we have that's out here voting in District 3 will come out and vote for mm. me so that I can continue to serve you mm. because you have to be represented by someone who understands how to reduce crime, who understands how to negotiate and work with uh, uh, programs to serve our children, how to address uh, wow. the blight and work with partnerships with CDCs to get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, you want somebody and I will be there to work for you. I've, I'm, I'm already working for you. I believe in you. I love you. And I want to wow. be there to continue to represent you on that council to make sure that District 3 mm -hmm. is getting all the services it deserves. You know what? He said he loved y'all. I okay. love you. I do. But I'm going to tell you this. <clears throat> we invited Mr. Kirkwood on here to definitely avail himself to you, uh, to give him a platform so that he could actually try to seek voters. But I, I tell anybody that come on here, uh, I'm open. But 
You've said a lot of good things, and I hope and I, I pray, I pray. Because I've seen so many people that they said these things, and then when they get up there, because that's why I asked you the question, what happened? you saying the right thing. All these people say the right things when they're running, and then when they get there, they don't truly uh, follow through, and they don't take action. You know, it, it amazes me how we have so many individuals that represent the districts in the city of Memphis, yet we've had no development in the city of Memphis, yeah. yet we talk about we want to save our kids, yet we halfway want to invest in our kids. And some kind of way, all those people that we put up there and they represent us, they allow individuals to take the money out of the coffers to invest Other in public-private public -private partnerships. You know, everybody's making money, and everybody, and, and we are all taxpayers. I don't care if you don't have a good job. If you go to the store, you pay 9.75 in taxes in this city. So if you go to the store in the lowest hood in this city, you and you buy sign. some bubble gum, or you buy a soda, or if you buy beer, I don't care what it is, you are a taxpayer. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not. So as a taxpayer, you deserve representation. Yes. Is that why... Uh, supposedly our forefathers left Great Britain, taxation without representation, and then you want to know why people are acting so crazy and so out of whack, okay? Uh, I want to thank you so much for coming on, Mr. Kirkwood. Appreciate it. And uh, don't forget us, and I'm not talking about Mike Williams. No, you're talking about I'm, the citizens. I'm fine. Do yeah. not forget the citizens yes. once you get there. And I, I think you're a man of your word, so we're going to be, we look forward to, you know, you doing great and wonderful and prosperous things and you uh, bring in some of the things that you say to fruition. Hey, we're going to do this. All right. We're going to do it. I think the time is now and I think this is a, a setup for Memphis okay. uh, for the things that you and I have been fighting for and desiring from, yes. heat, from childhood days. Yes, sir. Uh, we get a chance to get those things put into action. And so I'm excited about it. Outstanding. And I thank you. Okay. Well, we're going to take a real quick commercial break and we're going to have Mr. Anthony Hardaway. He's going to come up and we're going to talk about Mr. Greg McNeil's prints and all of these beautiful pictures and all of these things that Mr. McNeil is doing all across the country. A young man, once again, from Tennessee. Tennessee. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this commercial break. You're talking about a Center Stage Gospel Music live from Memphis, Tennessee. Featuring gospel artists from around the world. Toe tapping, hand clapping, down home gospel music. Watch on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and your local Comcast. Download the SVP TV app now on your smart television and mobile device. Center Stage Gospel season premieres Sunday, 8 p.m. Central. Tune in to Talking Law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill and the special guest host, Attorney Jerome Payne. Live TV talk on your digital device, on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Download the SVP TV app right now. Check us out every Tuesday on Comcast Cable, Channel 17, 8.30 p.m. And we are live every Friday on Facebook Live, 6 o'clock in the evening. You've got a question, our attorneys have the answer. So let's talk law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill on the SVP TV Network. Can you actually imagine hosting your next event at the all-new SVP Banquet and Event Center? Yes! Spacious, beautiful venue with plenty of parking located in the heart of East Memphis. Let us host your next intimate birthday gathering, family repast, bachelorette party, wedding and reception, baby shower, corporate meeting, social club event. Call us today. Don't wait. 901-244-6874. The all new SVP Banquet and Event Center. Ladies, do you feel feminine during your feminine flow? You know, your monthly cycle, your period? Are you still suffering in silence? The suffering is over. It's time to choose Rain. Rain is an all natural, premium sanitary napkin with eight layers of cotton, high grade polymers, graphene to help cut bacteria by 99.9%. Lady, let's protect the most precious jewel in the world you. 
Grain Premium Sanitary Napkins do not make any medical leave back claims or personal recommendations of any kind. For more information, contact Marilyn McGee. Hey folks, it's Issa Haddad here. I got some good news and a special invitation for you to come see me here at Sunrise Carrierville. Come on down, check out my inventory with new, pre-owned, and certified vehicles to choose from. I can get you financed when no one else can. Come on by, bring your family. I treat you like family. Come see me, Issa, here at the number one dealership in the Mid-South, 46 days. Come on in, ask for Issa. Bankrupt, slow pay, bad credit, it's okay. Let Issa put you in your brand new truck or car today when you shop at Sunrise Chevrolet Carrierville. And don't forget, Ask for me, Issa. And welcome back to Memphis 360, the television show. We say we like to go from the boardroom to the streets. All right. Now we have Mr. Anthony Hardaway mm -hmm. on the stage with us, and he is a representative for Mr. Greg McNeil. And I'm going to assume that this is Greg McNeil <laughs> that is calling. All right. Uh, Hello, Greg. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great, sir. How okay. are you? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to leave this on. Um, you're on the set with uh, yes. me and me and Anthony. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about uh, your prints. So tell tell the community a little bit about your prints. Um, we're, back in 94, um, I saw what was happening to black images then. And um, I saw where we were headed. And uh, the images I was seeing on the news were horrible. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was already in Los Angeles. And it was murders and gang shootings and wow. robbery. Okay. And so um, I was basically called to do something about it, which mm -hmm. I didn't know at the time. Um, but it was revealed to me that it needed to be photography. Mm -hmm. It needed to be images of black men, mm -hmm. and it needed to be black pyramids. Okay. It, it, mm -hmm. They needed to be great and timeless. Okay. Mm -hmm. And nobody was doing it, so I had to teach myself. And I spent years putting into it and teaching myself and um, fighting for that. I'm still fighting for that. Okay. Um, the goal was to create images that were strong and powerful and to inspire other black photographers mm. To do the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That way, together, we could flood the industry, uh -huh. the world, yes. with um, thousands of powerful, strong images of black men. Mm. So every time they show a negative one, negative one, we've got a million positive, powerful ones. Mm. Uh -huh. I didn't get that. Uh, what I did get was me by myself. Um, I spent more time fighting people, defending my work, than I did um, wow. any help. Wow. And so um, years later, I didn't give up. And um, I've been lucky enough for the years to meet people like um, Mr. Hardaway that is with you that's been a great friend mm -hmm. and an incredible help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't forget people. Um, I just can't forget people like George Floyd. Uh -huh. uh, I, I see those images to this day in my head. Yes. And um, we're losing our black kings. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. The, the prisons, you build one tomorrow, and it's filled five times the capacity yes. within a year of yes. your children. Mm -hmm. I call them black modern-day slave ships. Mm -hmm. And so, what are we doing? Yeah. Years ago, about six years ago, I was sitting with a friend in a coffee shop, and I had noticed something about six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And some brothers had walked, we were sitting outside, some brothers were walking down the street, and none of them said hello. And um, I spoke to all of them. Mm -hmm. And I told my friend sitting there, I said, this is going to turn out to be one of the worst things that ever happened to us since slavery. And, and what's that? Us not speaking to each other. Oh, okay, mm. okay. Look, I can't say good morning <laughs> to you, mm -hmm. hello or hi. I'm missing out on my new best friend. Yes. I'm missing out on my, my work partner mm -hmm. that we changed the world together because we met. Mm -hmm. All those opportunities are now closed down completely 
because we walk past each other and can't say hello or good morning. Wow. Which happens to me all the time now. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. But they don't know anything about me. Mm. I've had people that I've shot who have had one in particular 14 years uh, modeling career with New York. With New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it started with good morning. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How are you? Leave it the post office. If that had never happened, you would have had a 14-year modeling career. Right, right. So we're missing out on all of this. Opportunities. Because we can't even say hi. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, and so um, I don't want to see these guys in prison. The rest are in the, at the morgue. And this is what's happening with us. Mm -hmm. And so images like that, yeah. I created them so my black pyramids. Mm. Uh -huh. So we could see how, change how we see each other. Right. That's what I want us to do. I want us to change how we see each other. Okay. I don't know which images you've seen, but just because you've seen what every uh, Mr. Hardaway have shown you so far, it reminds you of yourself yes. or somebody in your neighborhood mm -hmm. or somebody you know. Well, I'm looking at uh, Zero Hour right now. We have it, uh, the large portrait on the stage with us. Yes. And okay. we also have... Uh, what is this? And I'm going to move around. Uh, it's uh, actually the mess, and we call it. It's uh, the God Wars. Mm -hmm. We have that one on the stage with us as well. Though These are powerful yes. uh, presentations. They're powerful representations of young warriors yes. is what it is. Individuals and sometimes that my work is futuristic. Sometimes it's from the past. Mm -hmm. Uh, it can be a variety. There's other images. Um, zero Hour, there's three guys together. Yes. I created that because I got sick of seeing us. You never see us together unless it's a basketball team or a rap, mm -hmm. or rap group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know, we need an image showing that we're kings. Come on. And that we're headed someplace better. Right. And that we're carrying each other. Mm hmm mm hmm It and didn't exist. Mm -hmm. I had to create it. Yeah. And what about Warrior? Warrior is my activists, my fighters. Uh -huh. The people that are in the trenches like me that never get recognized. Uh -huh. um, they're out there fighting every day. Uh -huh. There is a fire about them that you can't put it out. Right. And um, they're out there right now. Uh -huh. and, but they've never seen themselves sometimes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And sometimes they get down. Sometimes they get, feel like they defeat it. Okay. And so just to have that and say, wow, and we've heard this from other people, um, they would see Warrior and they would say, that's me. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay, and so. that's why I did it. Uh, uh, these images, I, I during quarantine, I, I saw the protests, mm -hmm. George Floyd video, um, all of them, Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. our black kings. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, some of the strongest images of black men I've ever seen, and I've done my homework, okay. um, was at my house. I created them. <laughs> and um, when I get out of here, quarantine, yeah. um, by any means necessary, I'm gonna, I got to keep trying to reach my people. Mm -hmm. So that's why those images are out the way they are. We, I went to Memphis and gave them away. Uh -huh. Wow. What's the name of the other images that we, that you have? You have a series, correct? Um, there's quite a few through the years. I've been doing this since 94. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a series of um, Lost Legends. Yep, um, Lost Legends, yeah. You know, these are black pyramids. Mm -hmm. So they're out there in the world. Um, Ebony Angels. Mm. Um, they're out there in the world somewhere that some child somewhere mm -hmm. can look up and say, oh, my God, that's me. See, I was Black Panther before there was a movie. Okay. In Wakanda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let me let me I ask was you this. Already out there doing it. If someone wants to look at your prints, do you have a website or somewhere that they can go to view or purchase uh, some of your prints? I do prints? not right now. Um, what can happen is you can also reach me under my website, which is Greg McNeil. Okay. Um, my email is is G Havoc five seven at gmail.com mm -hmm. um but mr hardaway has some that he's uh giving out mm -hmm. giving away mm -hmm. and um until he runs out and i send him more um anyone
one, if he has them with him, um, I'm sure he's uh, giving them out. Mm-hmm. Um, I want people to have them until we run out. Um, some of them came out in the past, okay. so we're almost out of those. Um, but the bigger ones that we have now, they were an act of desperation mm-hmm. coming out of quarantine. Wow. Um, that um, we're way past lost. Okay, we are. And so... I wanted mm-hmm. us to um, have some kind of access to them or, or someone give them to the, to you mm-hmm. or you see it, but something. I, I was in Memphis. I was mm-hmm. there for almost uh, two weeks, mm-hmm. and we were giving them out. We're at the mall. We're at, at a Walgreens. Mm-hmm. And a lot of black people, some black people walked past us and didn't want them. Mm-hmm. But I understand when you're self-defeated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I understand when you're lost and you don't you, you've given up. Mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. But your black kings are filling up the prisons or they're filling up the um, cemeteries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you are a Tennessean as well, correct? I was born and raised, yes, Tennessee, uh, right there on the borderline of Kentucky and Tennessee. Okay. South Fortune, Tennessee, uh, Fortune, Kentucky. Okay, okay. And uh, how do you like it out there in California? Los Angeles is crazy. Um, <laughs> it is crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but um, at the time, it's where I needed to be to learn what I needed to learn, mm-hmm. to get out of um, the South, okay. to see the world. Um, I'm a photojournalist. I, I do art photography, fashion, and photojournalism. Mm-hmm. I've shot in Africa, Barcelona, Thailand. So I've seen the world, right? and um, it enables me to see deeper. And um, coming back here, being here, uh-huh. um, it's really weird because I, I have all that Tennessee, mm-hmm. but I'm also very L.A. Okay. I know L.A. very well. Okay. And so, but L.A. is what I needed in order mm-hmm. to be the person mm-hmm. I am today. Correct. Absolutely. And so... Um, I'm just grateful that um, this opportunity, mm-hmm. even for you guys to um, let me call in, I've mm-hmm. never done this before, and um, <laughs> to see the work, um, it just moves my heart because wow. I have met people, even when I was in Memphis, mm-hmm. who got it, mm-hmm. who want their, you know, uh, want their kids to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the most important thing. You might not be able to save them all, mm-hmm. but at least you're in the act of saving. Okay. Reaching, educating. They don't want us to have this. They don't want me to have this. Right, right. I done been through every fight you can name. I've been called everything you can think of. Um, I've done it all. Trying to get us to just see. Mm. If you could see the power in him that I see, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's a lot harder to put a bullet in him. Mm. And that's, I believe that was the beauty of you coming to Memphis uh, this past March when you were here. The beauty of it was to see the children run to it and just hug the posters and say, this is me, this is me, or I would like to have this. And we have a lot of wonderful stories wow. where we were giving them out. And I believe at the library, this lady was actually getting for her, uh, her son. Mm-hmm. And he came out of the car and said, no, no, I want to touch this. I want my own, Mm -hmm. and that was powerful. We were also in many different areas of Memphis, and while we were giving these out, we were placing crowns on people's heads. Yes, and these were children, Mm -hmm. these were uh, grown men Mm -hmm. who are kings, Mm -hmm. these were uh, our beautiful queens, they Mm -hmm. were women, and the beauty of it was is the community was just screaming for this opportunity to say, it feels really good to walk in someplace and somebody acknowledge me. Okay. And to see the children take the crowns and put it on their parents. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that we need now in the city of Memphis. This would help heal us when it comes down to a lot of things that we're going through in our city and in our state. Well, but see, that's the problem that I see within our communities. A lot of, you know, even when we grew up, uh, we didn't have a whole lot. Mm-hmm. But we were taught to dream. We yes. were taught to yes. aspire. Yes. Absolutely. We were taught to have hope. Yes. And we were taught that we could be anything that anything. we wanted to be. Absolutely. And a lot of the young people now, they have lost that spark. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at the parents' fault. Yeah. The parents' fault because the parents 
wanted them to have what they didn't have growing up. Mm. And by doing so, you gave it to them, mm -hmm. and you allowed them the freedom Come on. You, did not, you didn't have to talk to you any old kind of way, mm -hmm. and you reward them with video games and new stuff. Mm. And what you end up is with the children you have now. Look mm -hmm. at them. Okay. Well, and so the, no respect yeah. for you or anybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so even the ones that we have working with now, our young people and our future leaders, Step into their world. Find out what it is that they like to do. Find mm -hmm. out their talents mm -hmm. and encourage that talent. Nurture that talent. Nurture. Mm -hmm. Invest in the talent yes. and the young person. Yes. And I guarantee you, right. we could change. We could. We could. We could move the city. We can mm -hmm. galvanize to the point to where, as a lot of this crime would go down, mm -hmm. because guess what? Mm -hmm. They don't have time to think about those negative things and and do those negative things. Now they're like, no, somebody's investing in me, right. and I don't want to let myself down, I don't want to let them down. Most of all, I don't want to let my community down. Mm. Right. And find out who's great at that thing that child wants to do, mm -hmm. yes. and then introduce that child yes. to, that, Absolutely. to that person's existence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So well, now he know he can do it because somebody else done done it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, we got about a minute left. You got anything else you want to tell these people about your work, sir? Um, first of all, I want to thank the city uh, for all their support. Mm -hmm. um, if I could change one thing with us, it would be changing how we see each other. Mm -hmm. If you saw in the posters, mm -hmm. if you saw that in each other, mm -hmm. how can you kill him? Strength. You want to be mm -hmm. uh, that to be your best friend. You yeah. want to support Absolutely. him and lift him up and mm -hmm. see what do you want to be and how can I help? Right, right. Absolutely. We got to change how we see each other. Mm. We can't afford. We can't afford anything else. We're going backwards. Yeah. And we're going backwards real fast. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. So if you change that one thing, we can change everything. Wow. How we see each other. Okay. It's gotta be changed. Right. Teach it in school, whatever you need to do, and but it needs home. to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I want to thank you so much for calling in, mm -hmm. Mr. McNeil. Man, you have some thank beautiful, you. beautiful um, prints. Thank you for uh, uh, allowing me to. Mr. Hardaway then gave me a couple. I think I'm going to have them matted and put Abs it. Yes. I'm going to put them. I'm going to get the beautiful mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm, right. I'm going to get some of that wood, some of that hard mm -hmm. wood because mm -hmm. uh, I can put these. I said, man, I can put these in my daggone, uh, my me room, my he room. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, right. When I'm up there chilling and recording and all of this other kind of stuff. So I definitely, definitely want to thank you. I want to thank you for the inspiration. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for uh, your desire to change young people, to influence uh, young people into being all that they can be and letting them know mm -hmm. that we are descendants of kings and queens. Absolutely. And they have the yes. ability to be yes. kings and Ab queens. So don't, mm -hmm. that's right. don't, don't give up. Just change it. Yes, sir. Don't give up and you keep pushing. Great. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hardaway. Thank you. Take care out there. We look forward to seeing you again. You got it. Take care. Bye. 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 Right. Thank Bye. you. Okay. How long we got, Angel? One minute. We're yeah. out of time. You got something you want to say, Mr. Hardaway? You know what? First of all, I want to thank you for being the leader in this community. Not only in this community, in the state, well, in you. this region. Thank you. Um, many, I have watched you many of years lead us. And I am truly wow. grateful that you are able to talk to the people. We have so many leaders that you can't get to, but for you, you're welcome. Truly believe in encouraging everyone to be their best. Well, and you. that's what we need now throughout. Yeah. And I hope that you continue to do that and always know I am here for you for whatever you need, volunteer-wise, work-wise word-wise, however it may be. And trust me, you. I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, please hold me to that. I look forward to working with you, sir, because my work that I'm doing now is from the work that you paved the way for, and you right. told me to go forth. Yeah. 